Pull it back, everybody. It's time for another out of this world story from our space. It's titled, Went to my wife's phone. Now, I think divorce might be the best thing for both of us. Some background. My wife had been checked out for maybe two years, leading me to shoulder the burden of the household chores. She'd come home from work and zone out on her phone or watch TV and then go to bed, rolling over. We hadn't had sex for almost half a year. I was fed up. I was paying for this bigger house she wanted that mostly I cleaned up, looking after two cats she wanted and it felt like one-sided and lonely. We both work, so I am exhausted too, but I made it a priority to take care of our home and pets, and she just didn't. When it came to her friends or college though, she had energy and time to go out, help them clean, help them move. I asked her if she wanted to get a divorce. To my surprise, she was ready to walk out. I tried to talk to her about counseling, therapy, working on her problems, etc. She said she didn't want to. She didn't want to do the marriage thing. She didn't love me anymore. That I demanded too much. To my shame, I begged her to stay and promise I would work on myself. I'll admit, in my frustration of doing everything by myself, I did lash out in built-up anger and frustration sometimes. My mother-in-law convinced her to give us another chance. Fast forward a few weeks, I'm studying on a Saturday to appear before a board for a promotion, I'm with my study group in the morning and then study by myself all afternoon so I don't check my phone. Around nighttime, I look at my phone. Not a single message. I go home and she's steady texting and Snapchatting and who knows what else. This nagged me hard. She doesn't open my Snapchats anymore. If she does, it's hours later. Same with my text messages. I'm not proud of what I did, but I did it and it is what it is. My suspicion had grown too large. I couldn't sleep and in the middle of the night, for the first time in all of our years of marriage, looked through her phone. The last text she sent out was right before bed to her new supervisor. I had joked when the new supervisor showed up that she had gotten a crush on them because she couldn't shut up about him. How funny G was, how nice G's Jeep was, details about G's appearance and the day. What I saw on the phone isn't a clandestine relationship, but nonetheless hurtful. I too have had crushes over the years, but I stayed away from them out of respect to my marriage. In contrast, my wife was diving headfirst into creating a friendship and strengthening a bond with this person. While I received bland responses hours apart, her messages with this person were constant and chock full of emojis. It was obvious my wife started with the text messaging and sent the bulk of them. Eventually, she started sending little hearts with her messages, and her supervisor started to respond in kind. My wife tried to be funny and witty. I haven't seen that type of effort from her since we were dating and the first year of marriage. Then there's the other acts. On TikTok, my wife floods her supervisor's inbox with videos. The supervisor sends her one back every once in a while. On Snapchat, the supervisor rocketed up to her number two spot. Mind you, I'm the number one still, but after years of Snapchatting. This person is number two after only a couple of months. During the divorce talks, my wife told G, I'm fine, happy to be honest. I'm just upset about my cats and how appreciative she was of G helping her through this time. I was crushed. The divorce talk period was so devastating to me and she was just so blasé about it. Not only that, but she clearly doesn't enjoy communicating with me as much as she does with this person. I had asked her before if there was someone else. She said no. I asked her again a few weeks back if she had a crush on G. She grew angry and defensive. Saying that they were just friends and having a new good friend didn't mean she wanted to screw them. I put the phone back and didn't mention anything, as talking about displeasing things is nagging, and so now I avoid it. The next night, she put her phone under her pillow, and every night since. I passed the board, I called her to tell her the good news, and offered to bring my lunch. She said she was helping G in their office. My blood ran cold. I didn't know if I could handle the way I anticipated my wife would look at this person, I held my breath and took our lunch to that office. When I mess up things on the computer, my wife talks to me like I'm stupid. With G, I saw her be patient. I mostly talked to Q, another co-worker that was there. My wife would tease G relentlessly. Q did sometimes as well. I must admit, G is an attractive person and funny. I could see how they are a likable person and others find them attractive. But it made my heart heavy to see my wife pay so much attention and give so much energy to this person so I left to go to my work and check on my team. Oh, I had mentioned to her before the board that I wanted to have a small barbecue if I passed. 
she ran with it and invited G and Q on the spot when I announced I had passed. My friends could come Saturday, so that was the day I chose for the barbecue. At home, my wife told me that G had a thing Saturday, so could I change the date? My blood simmered, and I threw out, This is for my promotion. If you and G want to have a date, you guys can do that on your own time. She never said, No, I don't want to have a date. And she has not contradicted any of my insinuations such as, If it was G, you would have responded. This one was regarding her vehicle registration I'm hamping with. It was urgent, and she didn't respond. She ignores them as if she didn't hear. I don't know. Maybe it's the, I don't love you anymore, lingering in my mind, causing me to see things that aren't there. But I really feel like she just doesn't like me as much as this person. I come with the expectations of a partner in a relationship. Yes, I would like help around the house. Yes, it is boring to have to discuss our finances and budget. I can't help I don't like country music like G does. I'm from the city. I like to go dancing in night quads. I'm not into the stuff they're into. I don't watch my 600 pound life. I'd rather watch science fiction. I can't help that I'm not like G and I don't want to be. It's been an uphill battle to learn to love myself. I think I'm just accepting that maybe it is over and you can't hold on to people. I really do believe she likes this person. I don't know why she continues to lie to me. Maybe out of pity? Maybe because G is happily married. She has tried to be more present after the divorce talks, helping me clean the house and letting me pick what we watch during dinner, but especially after what I saw on the phone. I feel like she can show me one thing, but that doesn't change your feelings on the inside. I don't know what's really going on inside. That's what caught me off guard in the first place. I never knew if she was unhappy to be able to work on the problems. And now, I don't know if when she says she loves me, she means it. Clearly, something has been broken. I no longer trust her. Her actions seem disingenuous. And she deserves someone who won't violate her privacy or is paranoid. Maybe divorce is for the best. All right, community. Let this guy have it. Anti-Costa says, Dude, you are treating things the wrong way. Look, go listen to today's YouTube video of True Story Nation. It is about a woman that behaved like your wife, cheated, and filed for divorce, but now she regrets her decision. She said that when her husband caught her cheating and his immediate response was to forgive her, she lost all respect for him and hated him because he was too weak to stand up for himself. Don't make the same mistake. Come up for yourself. First of all, stop bringing lunches to your wife. She is cheating on you. Why are you taking care of a woman that disrespects you in such a way? Her disrespect towards you is off the chart. She invites her affair partner to your party? What the heck? I would advise you to tell your wife she isn't invited to the barbecue. Next, you should contact his wife and expose the affair. Tell her what you found out. Destroy your wife's affair. As long as the affair is alive, your marriage is dead. Then, lawyer up and start the divorce proceedings. Let her know that you started the divorce. You have to nuke her fantasy world. Once she loses her affair partner and she realizes she's going to lose you as well, she will fall back with her feet on the ground. You sound like a guy open for reconciliation. If you take that path, do not make it easy for her. After you file for divorce, only consider reconciliation if she comes up with it. She should beg you for it. If she doesn't, don't waste any more time on her and divorce her. If she begs, tell her that if she wants it, she needs to pack her stuff and leave the house until you decide to let her move back in. You need to think on whether you want reconciliation. When she moves out, try to avoid having contact with her, even if she starts blowing up your phone. Only reply sometimes and be short and cold. After a few weeks, you can let her come back to talk about it. Then tell her she has a few months to convince you that she is worthy of reconciliation. She has to report herself and the affair partner to HR, quit her job, and stop contacting the affair partner. From now on, her phone is your phone, and other boundaries that you set. If she disagrees on them, you divorce her. If she starts making problems about these boundaries later on, you divorce her. I didn't make this stuff up. I have these steps from another infidelity subreddit, and this is the only way to save your marriage. But what you are doing now is not the right way to go about it. You are her husband. You work your ass off to pay her bills. You make her food, clean her house, take care of her. If she doesn't value you, then stop this relationship with her. Let Q do all this stuff for her. He won't. He doesn't love your wife. He is using her. As a man, you are the gatekeeper of the relationship. When she crosses the boundary of your relationship, you walk away from her. I wish I were Shellfist thinks. At a bare minimum, she's deep in an emotional affair with her supervisor. She will be running straight into his arms, that's for sure. It sounds like you have a good perspective on the situation, though. My wife turning coal on me has made me want to die, so I know how it feels. I trusted her with my life, 
and would have given her my organs for transplant. But that isn't as exciting as the new friend at work. Stay strong, man. DC Native 2020 says, It is over. You cannot trust her anymore. She has something going on with G. And if it is not with G, it will be someone else. Get yourself in shape physically and mentally and go meet new women online or in real life. It may take a few months to get over this, but you will for sure. If what you described happened to me, I would file for divorce the next day. And I was married to her for 10 years with two kids. Our situation was completely different than yours. And why put yourself through this? There is plenty of 30-something women out there that are single or divorced with no kids and very attractive. 25 to 35-year-old women is a great dating pool for divorced men in their 30s and 40s. And lastly, Champy Baby says, You sound like a really great guy, man. And you have your crap together. It's a tough pill to swallow, but this seems like one of those rare moments where you have to man up and do what needs to be done. Get your ducks in order, stash some cash, and do the deed. Some of the stuff you described is like a dagger to the heart. You deserve better, and that better is out there. You just gotta ride out the sock to get there.